Uh, we're going to do something a little different this morning, and uh, I'm a little nervous, so I'll just go ahead and tell you that up front. <laughs> so, I'll go ahead and admit that up front, but uh, everything's going to be okay. Uh, <clears throat> there's one thing that uh, that we can be sure of, and uh, and that is that God keeps those who trust and obey Him. Yes. Amen. Amen. And if you don't get anything else out of this lesson this morning, if that's the only thing you get out of this lesson this morning, then you've got a golden nugget. Amen. So God does. God keeps those who trust and obey Him. Amen. Amen. If you trust and obey God, you cannot go wrong. I mean, God's going to take care of you. God's going to provide for you. That does not mean that we're not going to face struggles and trials in life. Uh, you know, we're going to have obstacles we have to overcome. Mm -hmm. But we already always know and have that assurance that God keeps those to trust and obey Him. Amen? Amen. Uh, our focus today is uh, on Noah's obedience to God and to trust Him to fulfill His Word. God is faithful. Amen? Uh, God is going to do what His Word says He's going to do. Just because we may not see it this morning or we may not see it tomorrow, may not see it the next day, God's going to fulfill His Word. God's going to fulfill His promise to us. And this is a great lesson this morning. I know it's probably uh, nothing new. To a lot of you this morning, uh, everybody's heard about Noah and the ark and, and all those things and all. But, you know, every now and then it's good just to be remembered, uh, you know, of, of God's faithfulness right. and all. Uh, and, and, and the part that we play of us being faithful to God. And uh, so if we study this lesson this morning, we're going to see how God uh, is true to his word. Right. Amen. And all. Um, they say that uh, they say that uh, the, the, the time of the flood was approximately about 2400 BC. I don't know how they can go far that far back and, <laughs> and get all of that, but that's what they say that uh, the time of the flood was somewhere around 2400 BC. Uh, our golden text this morning is taken from Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7, and it simply says, "By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear." prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heirs of the righteousness which is by faith. Amen? That's our golden text. By faith. Uh, one thing I want to interject here, uh, you know, when Adam and Eve, you know, they really, they did not, when they started out, they did not have to live by faith. Amen? Right. They didn't know what faith was. Well, they simply, they walked with God, they talked with God, God was right there, God prepared everything for them, God had everything laid out for them. You know, there was no need for faith. Uh, but uh, in Noah's time, uh, they had to be a lot of faith. I don't know if, if, uh, if I was living in Noah's time and I was thinking, uh, if God spoke to me and told me to build an ark, <laughs> and it never rained and, and everything like that and all, you know, uh, how would we respond to that? Right. You know, if we had lived in the time of Noah. Uh, it's... it's it's amazing, you know, that the love and the trust and actually the fear. And the Bible talks about being a fear, you know. Now, it's a reverence of fear, you know. Uh, when we talk the word fear, there's a lot of different definitions uh, that can go along with that word fear. Uh, but in this text here, when we talk about uh, Noah fearing God, uh, he had a reverence for God. He yes. respected God and everything and all. And because of that, uh, you know, Noah began to build the ark. But anyhow, I want to do a little introduction this morning to the lesson. And I'll tell you right now, there's no way in this world we're going to get through all those pages you have. It's not <laughs> <Yeah>. going to happen. <laughs> if we do, the pastor's not going to be able to preach. <laughs> it's just not enough time. Amen. But we're going to try to hit the highlights. And, uh, and then that's why you've got the printed text. You can take it home and you can, uh, you know, read further. But uh, in Luke 17, chapter 26 through 33, through 27, Luke 6, 17, 26 through 27, Jesus spoke of Noah's generation. He says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were giving in marriage <coughs> until the day that Noah entered in the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Their lives were totally consumed with the material and the sensual, with no consciousness of God and his will for human life. Jesus states that prior, just prior to his second coming, a similar situation will exist. Mm -hmm. Amen. A similar situation will exist. Right. And if we look around today, 
and I'll, uh, we can look in the world today, and we see a lot of similarities that are taking place in the world today. Yes. And when people talk about the end time coming, uh, you know, what to look for and all, uh, God told us, Jesus told us that it would be like the days of Noah. Amen. And uh, unfortunately, we look in the world today, and we can see the same things taking place in the world today. That tells me that the coming of the Lord is a lot sooner than we think. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, I know, and I've said this before, Pastor said it, uh, we've heard that all of our lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and our parents have heard that, and their parents heard it, and their parents said it, mm -hmm. and we've heard it all of our life. Uh, you know, but it's going to happen one day. And we're beginning to see things unfold uh, in our generation uh, that are even telling us that that day is approaching sooner. Right. Now, I'm not trying to tell you this morning God's going to come back today, tomorrow, or next week. I don't know, right. you know, when he's coming back. But I do know one thing, he's coming back, amen. And mm -hmm. as I, if we talk about Noah and the flood, if we look around and the things we see in the world today, we can see very, very similarities. And uh, we know what happened, you know, during the time of Noah, uh, that God had to just completely destroy almost everything. Right. The only thing he didn't destroy was Noah and his family. Right. But everything else that was on earth was destroyed and all. And, uh, and he said whenever he comes back the second time, there are going to be similarities as to what took place, you know, that caused God to even have to repent that he even made man, you know, and, uh, and, and the destruction took place. Uh, but further into the introduction, it says, The obedience of Adam and Eve brought sin, misery, suffering. And this is in your text there. You can follow along there if you want to. Uh, Pam's got it. Well, that was not up there, but anyhow. The disobedience of Adam and Eve brought sin, misery, suffering, and death into the world. However... While we are not told directly, Scripture strongly implies that Adam and Eve repented and taught their sons to give honor and reverence to God. As evidence, both Cain and Abel presented sacrifices to the Lord. He considered Abel as acceptable and Cain's as not acceptable. <clears throat> Nonetheless, overall in succeeding generations, humankind followed the way of Cain in rebellion, godliness, and lawlessness. After the death of Abel, evil bore to Adam a third son, which was Seth, whose name means appointed. Now, Adam believed that God had appointed Seth to replace the seed of Abel. And you can find that in Genesis 4 and 25. His righteousness son murdered by Cain. After the birth of Seth's son Enos, people began to call on the name of the Lord, which was Yahweh. And uh, this might in indicate that a symbol of worship had been established. Now, from Seth came a godly line consisting of eight successive generations that climaxed in the righteous Noah. Despite this positive fact, the descendants of both Cain and Seth in the main were ungodly. Only one line, only one line stretched from Seth to Noah was righteousness. Scripture says, scripture says of Enos, the seventh from Adam in this line of descendants from Seth, that he walked with God, that Enos walked with God. And he was not, for God took him, and that's found in uh, chapter 5, verse 24. Uh, but in Hebrews 11 and 5, it states, By faith Enos was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now the tragic fact is this. Uh, is that in only a few generations, humankind despised its material and te technological gains. On the whole, had descendants to horrible debts of depravity. Some think there was no organized government in the pre-flood world. If this was the case, such a condition of godliness and archery would have contributed to the state of rebellion and violence existed by the time of Noah. Now, Jesus spoke of Noah's generation in Luke's in Luke 17, 26 through 27, which we just read a while ago. As it was in the days of Noah, so it also is in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the days that Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Their lives were totally consumed. Their lives were totally consumed with the material and essential with no consciousness of God and His will for human life. Jesus states that just prior to his second coming. A similar situation will exist at the second coming. There's a good reason for us to study the texts of Scripture surrounding Noah and the flood from their appreciation of his own time. Now that's kind of an introduction there. I know it's a little boring, but I read that to you. But anyhow, 
we're going to be reading uh, Genesis uh, uh, chapter 6, verses 5 through 22. And I know you probably cannot see that very well up there. Uh, but if you have your Bibles, you might want to turn there to Genesis 6, chapter 6, verses 5 through 22. Uh, it says, uh, the study of the genealogy of the narrow records in Genesis 4 and 5 revealed that the descendants of Cain followed his lead in lawlessness and rebellion against the law without any noble exception. On the other hand, Seth's descendants, while in the main equal Seth devoted and spiritual insensitive, contained one line that maintained a high degree of moral and spiritual integrity. And what I want to do is I'm going to read uh, Genesis 6, uh, verses 5 through 22. It says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And the, <clears throat> hold on one second. Okay. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was on evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the fowl, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy, the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Shem, Shem Ham, and Shaphat. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is beneath, which is the beneath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you and your sons and your wives, and your sons' wives with you. Then Noah did according to all that God had commanded him, so he did. <clears throat> uh, in verse number 5, uh, this is kind of a, a response to uh, uh, humanity, uh, divinity. And uh, verse number 5, it said, God saw that wickedness of man was great in the earth. That wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was on evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who I have created from the face of the earth, both men and beasts, and the creeping things and the fowls of the hour, for repenting me that I have made them. <laughs> uh, one question I have here in verse number 5. Uh, and this is where I want you to kind of get a little uh, interjection from each of you today. Uh, what did God see in verse 5? In verse 5. What did God see in verse 5? Genesis 6 and 5. The wickedness. And it says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness, that the wickedness of man was great. So in verse number 5, God saw the wickedness. Did God, when God, when God made man, did God ever intend there to be wickedness? Right. Never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was not God's plan. Right. Uh, and, 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 and if we if we think about God's plan and everything and all, and how God made everything so perfect, hmm. you know, and everything and all, uh, and, and everything that took place and all, uh, we we realize that that was never in the plan of God, but because of man. Because of evil that entered in, you know, then we begin to see that wickedness, wickedness took place. How did God respond to what He saw? In verse six, grieved him. Yeah, grieved him. the Lord was sorry that He had made man on earth, and He was grieved in His heart. Right. So God was grieved. He was sorry. You know, He had ever made man, and you know, if you think about that, uh, you know, God's intention from the very beginning. You know, and, and he was probably in the beginning was probably proud of his creation. Mm -hmm. You know, and but any time, any time that evil ever enters in, it destroys not only 
what God's plan did, but also in our lives today. Anytime we allow evil to enter into our lives today. And that's why the world's in a mess it is today. Because of the evil that takes place. Right. Amen. All the evil that takes place. And uh, and it's never has been God's plan. Uh, and it never will be God's plan. But God was, you know, if it broke God's heart. It says, and the Lord was sorry. He was sorry that he had made men on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. And what? how, how did God... Uh, why, and the reason that God was because he never intended I mean he intended to create a, a perfect place for us to live on right. you know that this was his creation you know and he was providing for them taking care of them and all Adam and Eve and he never intended that evil would ever come in but evil did come in and even with our children today you know when, we, when our children are born we always want the best for them right. you know we don't ever uh, when our children are born we don't ever think you know, of, uh, of their life being filled with, with this chaos and just all the craziness that's going on. You know, we want the best for them. Everything we can do, you know, to, to make their life, you know, better. And uh, and that's what God wanted, you know, when he, in the beginning when he created it. And all. But that's not what took place. And then, uh, and uh, it says, compare what the Lord saw in Noah's day in verses 11 and 12 with what he sees on earth today. Verses 11 through 12. Mm -hmm. The earth also was corrupt before God. Right. <laughs> and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Mm -hmm. So when we look at what was taking place then and we compare it to today. You know, do we not see the same thing? Mm -hmm. Do we not see the same thing? You know, and, and, and regardless of us being as Christians and, and everything that we try to do, you know, to, to live a, a righteous life before God and a holy life before God, we live in a fallen world. That's right. Amen? Yeah. We live in a fallen world. And uh, it was never God's intent for that to happen. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and so as, as, as we see that today, and we compare everything that happened in Noah's day, and we compare it to what happens in the world today, we see so many similarities, you know. And again, as I said earlier, you know, it's just showing us that the time of the Lord is coming again. I mean, God, you know, God destroyed everything, everything except for Noah. And the uh, amazing thing about that is, you know, God said, he, God said in his word that he would never do that again. Right. He would never destroy everything. He would never destroy uh, all human life. He would never destroy all creatures all trees or anything. He would never do that again, you know. Uh, but we do know that God's coming back and that God's coming back, uh, you know, and there's going to be destruction upon this earth. Mm -hmm. But God has made a promise he will not destroy everything again. And we know that in, 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 uh, from, you know, even from our childhood of, uh, you know, of studying God's Word and going to Sunday school and things like that, you know, that uh, one of the things that God did as a remembrance to us to show us that he would never destroy this earth again with a flood was the rainbow. Mm -hmm. As we see the rainbow, every time we see a rainbow in the sky, that's a remembrance to us, you know, that God is saying, you know, I once destroyed everything, you know, with, with a water. But that rainbow is a symbol to, to remind us today that even though he did that then and he destroyed everything then, that he would never do that again. And that rainbow was a reminder to us that when he comes back again, it will not be with a great flood. Right. Amen. Uh, uh, so that's just kind of remembrance to us. It says we desperately need to understand something of the magnitude of sin and of evil and of gross wickedness in this world. If we are to appreciate our redemption, God's love, grace, and mercy shines all the brighter against the awful reality of evil. Indeed, the very existence of evil is a powerful proof of God's existence and holiness. And that is something that Dave Hunt uh, Pam got it up there. Something that Dave Hunt had uh, uh, said, and uh, and, I, and very true. We just need to understand something of the magnitude of sin, of evil, and of gross wickedness in this world. If we are to appreciate our redemption, God's love, grace, and mercy shines all the brighter against the awful reality of evil. Indeed, the very existence of evil is a powerful proof of God's existence. And God's holiness. How do you think that that plays into us today? You know, when we think about that. Just think about all the evilness in the world today. You know, how does that play into our lives today? Right. You know, 
And still, you know, that, that regardless how evil this world is and how crazy and how wicked this world is, you know that we can find peace and comfort, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in a servant of God. Amen? Yeah. And serving Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, just like the promise that, that God made to Noah, you know, uh, because of Noah's obedience and because of Noah's love for God, that God was always going to take care of him. God was always going to fulfill his word to him. God was going to prove himself to him. So, you know, even today, you know, us as Christians, if we dedicate our lives to God and if we sincerely, you know, serve him with everything within us and love him, you know, the way he loves us, God's going to take care of us. That's right. And I know we live in scary times. I know we see a lot of craziness happening around. And I know sometimes people may even wonder, you know, well, where is God in all of this? Mm -hmm. Where is God in all of this? But, you know, us as being a Christian, you know, we have the hope and the peace and the comfort that knowing regardless of how bad it gets, doesn't matter how bad it gets, that God's going to take care of us. Okay. Amen? Because we're going to be faithful to him. Right. And God takes care of his faithfulness. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm not very good at this page stuff. <laughs> in, in verse number 8, in verse number 8, it says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of God. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Sham, Ham, Sham, Ham and Phasheth. Uh, again, if there's anything we get out of this lesson today, it is the faithfulness that Noah was you know, to God. Mm -hmm. And because of his faithfulness, then God was faithful to Noah, and God was performing that which he said he'd perform. Faith means trusting in the wisdom and leadership of God, and leaning on him for direction. Noah was able to act in faith because he had found grace or favor in the eyes of God, and you see that in Genesis 6 and 8. But Noah, however, spiritually sensitivity did not reach upward towards God. Instead, as, as is always the case with God's grace, he reached down to Noah. God reached down to Noah. The Lord chose to work through a human instrument that he, in his infinity wisdom, saw as pliable and usable for the defined, ordained purpose. And even today, we, as God's cho chosen people, we, as, as those who are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, you know, God has a purpose for each of us. Amen? Mm -hmm. Just like God had a purpose for Noah. Of course, right. God's not going to go tell us to go out and build no ark. Right. You know, and by no means is God going to do that tell us to go build an ark. But God is, uh, does have a purpose for each of us. Uh, hold on a second here. In, uh, in verse number 13 through 17, it says, How destructive uh, would the flood be? Somebody share that with me. Uh, would destroy everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, it would, it would destroy everything. Destroy everything. I mean... You can look at what water, the destruction of water does, mm -hmm. um, just by the hurricanes and stuff we face here, uh, what we've seen in Houston, what yeah. we've seen around. Um, that's that. That's just a storm that's mm -hmm. here for a minute and it's gone. And with a flood of the world, mm -hmm. it, it didn't stop for right. forty days. Right. Uh, so it was total total destruction. Yeah. Well, the whole earth was covered with water. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just like a hurricane that comes to us. You know, it was like you know, Houston and, and, and the water we got here in various places and everything and all, or any hurricane, just like what happened in uh, North Carolina over there just recently. You know, we're at uh, Wilmington. We just cut off from the rest of the world there uh, because there was no roads, bridges, or anything. They couldn't get to it. You right. know, we look at that, and today we call that destruction. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's terrible. It is. I mean, lives are lost. You know, and uh, property is destroyed. People's lives are changed. People's lives are destroyed. Mm -hmm. You know, because of destructions like that. But when we look at that, and, and, and today, and we look in the sense of destruction, it doesn't compare to anything. There is no comparison. Right. There's no comparison to the destruction that took place. You know, at the great flood uh, of Noah's time. I mean, everything. 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 There was nothing. You know, everything was destroyed uh, and all. But the only thing that was uh, was spared was, of course, Noah and his family mm -hmm. and all. Uh, his, his sons and his sons' wives. You know, the eight people, they were the only ones that was spared. And, uh, and, that, and, and that leads me to another thing that's really not in the text, but uh, 
It leads me to, 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 you know, when the Bible talks about, and I know I say this a lot, but when the Bible talks about, you know, a few, you know, mm -hmm. will make it, right. you know, that straight narrows away and broadens the way to destruction, mm -hmm. you know, the few will be that walks therein, mm -hmm. you know, that straight and narrow path, you know, and, uh, and I think about that. You know, what, what is a few in God's eyes? I have no idea. Right. You know, I, I, can't, I can't, can't stand here today and tell you, you know, what a few is. But I know when you compare a few to many, you know, there's a great distance there, mm -hmm. you know, and all. And uh, even though God said that he would not destroy everything, you know, it tells me there's only going to be a few that makes it. Now, that may be millions. I don't know, you know, because uh, a few in the world today is a, a lot, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but but it, it makes me stop and think, you know, Lord, am I going to be one of those few? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what do I need to, to do to be one of those few? You know. Lord, you know, because I don't, you know, just like Noah was, you know, Noah, Noah found uh, favor in the eyes of God. You know, according to God, he was a righteous man, right. you know. Uh, and all. So what is righteousness? You know, what is righteousness today? You know, trying to live a life every day that we can to please God. You know, mm -hmm. keeping him, you know, on the forefront, you know, of our mind. You know, and we talked about not long ago about uh, in the Old Testament, you know, the scriptures that they took the front ones in front of their, their face up here. And all they had, had right here. Uh, the frontlets, and, and there was four uh, series of scriptures, sets of scriptures that uh, that they lived by. You know, it was either up the four, on the forehead here or it was on their arm. And, uh, and uh, you know, but those were scriptures that they continuously, when they went to pray, you know, they prayed those scriptures they had on there as a remembrance to them. You know, I think today, you know, as we look at the destruction, you know, that took, took place here uh, with no one and all, and, and how dramatic that was and all, and, it was, and, and why was Noah spared? Why was he spared? Why did God choose him? Okay. You know, how wicked was that place? Right. You know, how wicked was that place? And it, that only Noah was the only one that God seemed fit mm -hmm. that he could spare. You know what I'm saying? Out of, out of everybody who was on the earth at that time. Sure, it wasn't populated, populated like it is today, but there were still a lot of people. Right. <laughs> you know, and Noah constantly warned him, constantly told him the whole time that he was building the ark. You know, but because, go ahead, sister. Right. Well, the scripture itself says that Noah was moved with fear. With fear. If the creator of the universe had a conversation with you mm -hmm. and said, I'm looking down and I see that everything that's going on on the earth is continuously mm -hmm. evil. Mm -hmm. Noah believed what God said to yes. him. Mm -hmm. Out of all the people that he that God could have spoken to, and you're right, there were there were plenty yes. of people. By this time, there had been some generations, mm -hmm. and the, the opportunity to believe, mm -hmm. the opportunity to hear, grab a hold of that message, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and in your heart say. My Lord, mm -hmm. I, I, I think we are not able to have a concept of the way the world operated back in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, if the world was very different in and of mm -hmm. itself, it had rain, right. you know, the uh, dew came up mm -hmm. in the water things. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I think it was just so totally different. But it is unique to know, to read in the scripture, that Noah found grace yes. because he believed what God said. Yes, right. I think the same rules still apply today. <laughs> our hearts, we, God speaks to us in our heart. The Holy Spirit moves. We know when we are hearing from God. Right. There is not a shadow of a doubt when you know that you know. But God created each and every one of us with that, I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse, but it's free will. Right. We choose. Right. Do I believe, do I believe that this is the word of God? Amen. And do I believe every word that's written whether or not I understand it right, right. whether or not I can remember it from one day to the next they quote it verbatim or if I have to go back and look it up I believe it's literal I believe it 
is the word right. of God. There is no question that it covers every single aspect of our life. Right. So that's why Noah found grace. Right. He believed what God right. said to him. Out of all the people that could have believed, they rejected. So it is an interesting concept that out of all the people that existed yeah. back then, mm -hmm. only eight mm -hmm. survived. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. I think there's going to be a big surprise yeah. when the trumpet sounds. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I, I, I know heaven's going to be full, <laughs> mm -hmm. but looking back over the last 6,000 years, right. you know, we're going to be in heaven with Enoch. And right. Moses. Yeah. And uh, our forefathers who were moved with reverential fear because God spoke to their hearts and they believed. Yes. Right. So it is our faith yes. that is our faith. the key. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, you know, I had a conversation just this week with someone, you know, we've talking about the you know, about everything taking place in the world today and in the Bible and things like that. And and, and the bottom line I told him, I said, you know, Unless you believe the Bible, right. mm -hmm. unless that's what you base your life on, right. and you believe the Bible, then everything we talk about doesn't mean nothing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, if you if you, if you don't if you don't if you don't believe, people can't they can't comprehend what you're talking about when you talk about spiritual things right. and all. If the ba if their basis is not rooted and grounded on the Word of God, right. You know, because that's why you see. A lot of evil taking place in the world today yeah. because number one they haven't accepted as a word of God being their guideline as that's to how it. to live that's it. you know and, and I have said this before and even the pastor told him you know that uh, you know the Ten Commandments mm -hmm. if everybody could just take the Ten Commandments and read them and, and, and say hey these are great these mm -hmm. are good you know and live according to the Ten Commandments how much of a peaceful place would this world be? Right. Amen. Yeah. You know, because when God, when God set everything in order, and, and all the chaos that happened, but when God set everything in order, and in Moses, I know this doesn't, this doesn't have to do with Moses, but when God put everything in order, and God instructed Moses, and God wrote those Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. and all, and He gave them to Moses, you know, that was the law of the land. That God said, "Hey, I, I've got to do something, mm -hmm. you know, to have order." Right. We have order, and these ten commandments that he came up with—they're not a—they're not a, a bunch of commandments. Only ten of them, mm -hmm. you know. And he said, "If my people will take these <coughs> ten commandments and if they'll live according to these ten commandments, mm -hmm. then this will be a peaceful place to live." Mm -hmm. Amen. But because of wickedness, right? You know, because of wickedness, because <coughs> of people, you know, because there is an enemy out there, and you know, and that took place, unfortunately, with the fall of Adam and Eve. You know, they opened up the door, you know, and all. And ever since, we have been combating that enemy, you know. But we have a choice. And if we could, and the reason people, a lot of people don't choose to follow the Ten Commandments is because they don't really have a fear for God. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Well, ahead, and one thing I will add is one of the things that is, is very sad and very scary at the same time that we have in common with the days of Noah was uh, like you referenced we don't really have an understanding of the way the world was back then but they were living in a place where the law of God the you know the commandments of God the, the guidelines of God were unknown Not unknown exactly. because they weren't written down on a tablet yet they weren't written down and and you say well we've got the Bible today but think about it if we don't preach and teach the Bible anymore, and we don't tell people what God's guidelines are because we're afraid of offense, because we're afraid mm -hmm. they're going to leave the church, or we're afraid they're going to, you know, not support us anymore. If if we as ministers of gospel stop and just tell them what they want to hear and tell them, pat them on their head and tell them they're okay, and everybody goes to heaven, we're ushering ourselves mm -hmm. back into the days of Noah, where we're going to have whole generations. That don't know right. the guidelines of God. Mm -hmm. Don't know they're they're uneducated mm -hmm. with the laws of God, the restrictions of God, the plans or purpose of God, uh, and it lines up with the days of Noah. Yes. And and I know sometimes we sit back because we're in the church, 
we think, oh, you know, we're way far away from that. We're closer than we think yes. to that. Because there's a lot of people who have no clue what the Bible says. Right, absolutely. Uh, and that wasn't always the case. At least not in, in America it wasn't because everybody went to Sunday school. Everybody went to, you know, children's church or went to VBS or whatever. And there was some kind of, you know, a semblance of knowledge Oh, that was general. That right. people knew who David and Goliath was. People knew who. You would be surprised uh, at people, adults uh -huh. now, that you can talk to. And, and if you mention David and Goliath, don't really know the whole story. Don't really know what's going on. Right. Um, and it's rapidly getting closer to like the days of Noah, right. where you have a vast amount of people who do not understand the law of God. Right. Do not have it and, and it's sad because we actually have it written down right. you know we actually yeah. have it in yeah. books and we can teach it and preach it right but around the world or i don't know around the world but i know a lot of in america we we've taken the bible and the word of god and put it on the shelf and replaced it with fun times right. and stories and mm -hmm. and little uh quotes and little you know things right. uh that sound good and uh -huh. keep people coming back but right. it's not yeah the education and that leads to destruction. Well, we're living in a time where the Bible is not stressed. Yeah. As much today, you know, it used to be. Well, yeah. no, that's absolutely right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, we don't have an excuse. Right. I mean, seriously. Yeah. I mean, back in the time of Noah's and all of them, like the pastor said, you know, there were no laws written down. Right. You know what I'm saying? No guidelines to say, right. this is how you live, this is what you do, right. you know, thus, 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 and that, you know. But, you know, we do today. Right. We have, the, we have the, the testimony and the fulfillment of, of the Word of God. We have the testimonies of all those who did live, in, who, who did live mm -hmm. according and obeyed God and the instructions of God. They followed the instructions of God. They had faith in God, you know, and, and they see how God moved and how God blessed them, how God took care of them, you know. So for us today, you know, we can't stand before God and say, well, I didn't know. Right. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? When God's going to say, well, I, I gave you a whole book. I gave you a whole road map, you mm -hmm. know, to, to guide you and lead you mm -hmm. and to tell you what was righteousness and what was evil, what was holy, what was evil. And, all, mm -hmm. and uh, but, you know, the Bible doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do you any good unless you read it. Right. Unless you study it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you can have ten of them in your house. Yeah. They can be one right there. It used to be the big, do you remember the big family Bibles? Those things yeah. were huge. <laughs> right there on your coffee table in the middle of the living room. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that yeah. book did you no good yeah. unless you opened up the pages yeah. and began to read and study. And it opened up a whole new world to you. Yeah. you know? Well, it's like, it's like medicine. Like you can go to the doctor and he can say, okay, I see your problem. Here's your prescription. And you go get it filled. Just having that bottle of prescription in your house isn't going to help you. You're not going to get better just because yeah. you've got the medicine. And th unless you take it, unless you open that up and you get it inside you, that's when it starts right. to help. That's yeah. the word of God. You, you know, yeah. it's it's there. And, you know, you got to think of it like that. Every day, I got to pop that thing open and I got to get this inside of me because that's what's going to keep me well. Right. It's what's going to keep me going and keep me healthy uh, and use it the same regimen. That's my, that's my medicine. Yeah. The word of God is our medicine. What keeps us whole? What keeps us, yes, sir. There's three things stand out to me. Uh, number one, Noah found grace yes. in mm -hmm. the eyes of the Lord, and God looks at the heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. Number two, Ephesians 2 8, for by grace are you saved through faith, not of works. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. And so we're under God's grace. Yes. Just like Noah was. Yes. Number three, Luke 17, as it was in so shall it be in the coming of yes. the Son of Man. This world we're living in is in terrible shape. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you, that's what it's going to take before Christ yes. is coming back. And the time is close. Yes. Mm -hmm. I yeah. believe it could happen any day. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, uh, the days of playing around, days of playing church, mm -hmm. days of playing around, you know, uh, and, and, and believe me, I know we got a lot of a lot of obstacles out there that pulls us. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but there's nothing more important than our salvation. Right. There's nothing more important than our relationship with God. Right. You know what I'm saying? 
So, you know, God has got to be first in our life. Yep. I mean, he's got to be first in our life. God just, God, God's a jealous God. Amen. You know what I'm saying? And he, and, and, you know, he created us and he says, I love you. You're my children. I want to take care of you. I want to provide for you. You know, I want to make a way for you when there seems the time to be no way for you. Right. And all I ask for you is to dedicate yourself to me. Have faith in me and, 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 and maybe everything. Now, that doesn't mean you can't go through life enjoying some of the things in, in, in this world has an offer. Right. I'm not saying you have to be a hermit and go right. hide yourself <laughs> in a, a closet somewhere, you know. And uh, No, we're, we're strangers in this world. We live in this world, but we got to understand in this world, God has to be first. Right. You know, he has to be first. You know, and, we, we, and I know kind of getting off track a little bit here, but, you know, the things that are important to us, we find time to do. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You know, I have a certain time I have to be at work. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just using I'm an example. You know what I'm saying? You know, I have to clock in before 7 o'clock. If I don't clock in before 7 o'clock, I am late. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I'll, I'm, the guys at work, same way. They have a set time. You know, mm -hmm. and they know if you know if we don't pay our electric bill, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna cut off our electricity. Yeah. That's right. You know what I'm saying? If they don't, we don't pay our car bill. They're gonna come possess it. You know. What? So what do we do? We make sure that those things are taken care of. Mm -hmm. But how much more precious is our relationship with God? Right. You know that we should do everything that we can to do to protect that. Yeah. Because that's what's gonna get us to heaven. Right. You know, all these other things in this world are just going to give us a little satisfaction we live here. You know what I'm saying? But our relationship with God, you know, is what's going to get us to heaven. You know, if we gain the whole world and lose our soul, what have we promised? Right. You know, it'd be terrible to live here if God was gracious enough to allow us to be 100 years old, you know, and then live 100 years old, you know, and that's the only durable life that we had because we had not made the right preparations to make it to heaven. You know, God did find, you know, Noah did find grace in the eyes of God. And according to, according to, uh, in, in a wicked time. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about that. It was so wicked, it was so wicked that God destroyed everything. Now, I, I don't know if you understand the magnitude of that. Right. Right. That's how bad it was then. Yeah. But God found one man mm -hmm. that he says, I can trust this man. You know, I can trust this man to start all over again. I mean, that that is something to be said. Now, I know we live today. You know, you know, we're afraid to uh, to express, you know, our relationship with God openly. Sometimes it's because you know people will mock us, make fun of us, and, and it's going to get worse as far as that part. You know, as far as being a Christian, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to have those who are going to come up against you. You know what I'm saying? I uh, know, but but I, I, again, I look back at Noah and I think, my goodness, mm -hmm. they mocked him, they mm -hmm. made fun of him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They probably stood out there and just laughed him to scorn. Yeah. But he had that relationship with God, that encounter with God, that caused his faith to be so strong. You know that he was willing to take all of the mockery, all the ridiculism. And everything. Yes, they had never rained before. You know, he said it's going to rain. You know, and this I'm building a boat. It's going to rain. It's going to cover this whole earth. Oh man, that that had to be a strong faith in God for him to take on that endeavor. Right. You know, how strong is our faith today? And I know I got to close because we're running out of time. But how strong is our faith today? We have the word. We know we win in the end. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, we already know that. If we hold on to God, mm -hmm. if we stay faithful to Him, if we stay obedient to Him, if we commit ourselves to Him, you know, in the end, we know we're going to win. We're going to make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, we have no excuses. We have no excuses. The little ridiculeism that we go, that we take in the world we live today, is nothing. Mm -hmm. It's nothing. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, anyhow, Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. Uh, Father, for your word, mm -hmm. thank you. Father, I thank you, Lord, for all those that uh, Father participated this morning, God, in, in the lesson, all oh, God. Lord, we want to thank you for your word because we know, God, uh, that your word, God, is so precious to us, God, if we will mm -hmm. study it and, Father, take it into our being, Father. Uh, Lord, and live according to it, God. 
that God there's only good things for us, Father and Lord, and uh, and Father, we want to thank you for that. You have given us that, Lord, today. That, that Lord, that we can uh, live a prosperous life in the Spirit for you, Father. God, we thank you, Lord. Ask that you be with each other, Father. We leave the day, Father, in Jesus' name.